All right, y'all. Peace and blessings. God bless y'all. I'm Jarvis Kingston, and I hope y'all doing all right and staying strong and solid in these times that we're in. I hope that you're safe, protected, and prayed up. I pray that you have repented, that you are baptized, and I hope that things become better for you and you overcome all of your obstacles as well. I pray that the Most High supply all of your needs, and he helps you right on time, okay? Now, today's message is going to be one from Jen DeLeona. It's a church note that I just got an email, newsletter subscribed. So um, the church note is titled, A Troubled Mind and an Open Door. So what I'm going to do is just read this church note to y'all and then close out with all glory to the most half Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I pray that this church note helps you for the next upcoming days. And I pray that you can apply it to your life and that it blesses you and helps you as well. Okay, so. Here's the church note, a troubled mind and an open door. Be thankful for not only the doors that God opens, but also the ones that he shuts. My God has you situated. Nobody can really hurt you deeply if you haven't invested in them greatly. The proof that I love is that I have the capacity to hate you. You can't hate someone you don't love. You can ignore them. You can be annoyed by them, but you can't hate someone you don't love. We have to prioritize prioritize what's really important in our lives, what's important, the, what opportunities we give our energy to. Some of us are praying for God to give us things that he simply cannot give us the way we are asking them to come. If we're asking God to give us peace in our lives, but we have no priorities, we will never receive the peace God gave us when Jesus died for us. How many of you have seen God put you and situate you and position you in places that you could never earn or deserve and that and don't know how you got here? Even your success is because of how God situated you. Some of us get prideful of some things we have accomplished. Even when God blesses me, I understand if he didn't give the wisdom, the strength, the opportunity. Without the opportunity God gives, all your human ability means nothing. Don't ever situate yourself in a position through manipulation because then you will carry the burden of performance. There is something awesome and freeing of knowing the Lord opened this door. There is something great about knowing God brought me into this relationship. You can get into a relationship and really God don't want you in it. And then you have to spend the rest of the relationship trying to get somebody to like a pretend version of you that you had to put on like a costume to get them to accept you. But if you had to compromise yourself to gain their acceptance, what did you really get? There's something awesome about God opening doors. There's something awesome about God closing doors. Lord, open the door. Lord, Lord, close the door. Because either way, I want your hand on the knob. Sometimes rejection is one of God's greatest doors. When God opens the door, nobody can shut it. If the door you're standing in front of you right now won't open, it's not yours. One of the greatest ways God will lead you in your life are through people who don't like you and leave your life, bring you and lead your life to bring you to something else. Have you struggled with bitterness for people who should have defended you? Refuse to let unforgiveness in your heart block the future God has for me. Some of you are losing the opportunity because you won't let go of the offense. The opportunity is greater than the offense. When people leave you out, you're not locked out because he has the key to that room. Everybody doesn't like you and everybody doesn't have to. If God is for you, you don't have to say anything. You don't have to defend yourself. You don't have to go back and forth. Let it go and get through it. This door, the door is yours. I have placed before you an open door. It's not going to be in your past. The battle is not about strength. It's about strategy. Satan is not stronger than you. We give the devil too much credit sometimes. The devil is attacking my marriage. The devil is attacking my finances. It's not about who is stronger. It's about who is smarter. The enemy wants to mess with your mind so much that you can't even go through the doors. God opens for you as you so you can't enjoy the moments God gives you. He wants to mess with your mind to the point you can't even focus long enough to pray about something. He wants you to get focused on disappointments, outcomes you can't control, offense you can't get over, and regrets of the opportunities you can't get back. Not only does God use open doors, so does Satan. Have you opened a door in your mind to the devil? Have you been not letting new people love you because of the old people who hurt you? Have you stopped trusting people, period? Have you been standing in an open door, but the enemy has gotten your mind so troubled that you can't get through it? 
that you can't go through it. The enemy is using stuff that hasn't even happened yet to run you off from opportunities that are right in front of you. The reason the devil is at the door to begin with is because what God has on the other side of it is so important. There will always be an enemy to anything significant. God has something with your name on it. The bigger the opportunity, the bigger the opportunity is, the bigger the devil is. You think the devil at the door means it's not God? No, the devil at the door is giving you an indication that this is so big and important. You can't understand why I'm feeling this depressed, but what you don't know, what the size of the devil is, the size of the assignment. Don't die here. This is a door. The devil can't close the door, but he can't tell you a story. They won't like you. They won't accept you. No one cares. You don't have what it takes. You're going to fail and everyone's going to laugh. It never conflicts on the outside. What stops you It's the fears within. And that is a church note, y'all. A troubled mind and an open door. This is a very great church note. These church notes come along every Sunday and they're always on point. They're always just right on time, you know, and these are always very situational. And some of us are entering that phase right now where there's something on the other side for us, but a person with a troubled mind is battling with it. A person with a troubled mind, they're holding themselves back and sabotaging their own blessings, you know. And when the Most High opens a door for us, we got to be super grateful, give them all the glory and praise for it. All right. We can't walk around with doubt no more. We can't walk around with insecurities. We got to be firm, confident, bold people, okay? So that is a church note right there, really plain and simple. You know, when the Most High does close the door for you, it's for your own benefit and your own good because the Most High only has your best interest, okay? You always got to remember that. Rejection can be a blessing, okay? A, de a decline of denial can be a blessing because the Most High has something better for you. The Most High has something much more opportune for you. He has something much more fruitful for you, okay? He has something much more abundant for you, okay? So you got to remember that, that Christ did give us life in abundance, okay? And we can't lose sight of that. So that is a church note, y'all. And we are about to close out, okay? What I would love to do with it with this is give all the glory to the Most High of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I would love to praise His only begotten Son who died for our sins as well, okay? So what we're going to do is just give Him all the glory and praise as we close out and just go from there. All right. He is the Adam, the Advocate, the Almighty, the Alpha and Omega. Amen. Amen. The Apostle of our profession, the Arm of the Lord, the Atonement Sacrifice for our sins, the Author and Finisher of our faith. The author and perfecter of our faith, the author of life, the author of salvation, the beginning and the end, the beginning of creation of God, the beloved son, the blessed only potent, the blessed only ruler, the branch, the bread of God, the bread of life, the bridegroom, the capstone, the captain of salvation, the chief cornerstone, the chief shepherd, Christ, the Christ of God, the consolation of Israel, the cornerstone, the counselor, the creator, the day spring, the deliverer. The desire of the nations, the door, the elect of God, Emmanuel, the eternal life, the everlasting father, the faith and true witness, faithful and true, the faithful witness, the first and the last, the first begotten, the first born from the dead, first born of all creation, the forerunner, the gate, the glory of the Lord, God, the good shepherd, the great high priest, the great shepherd, the head of the church, the heir of all things, the high priest, holy and true, the holy one, the hope, the hope of glory, the horn of salvation, the I am, the image of God, Jehovah, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus, the judge of Israel, the judge, King eternal, King of Israel, King of kings and Lord of lords, King of saints, King of the ages, King of the Jews, the king, the lamb, the lamb of God, the lamb without blemish, the last Adam, the lawgiver, the leader, commander, the life, the life of the world, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the living one, the living stone, the Lord, the Lord, Yah, Yahweh, Yahuwah, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh be Yahweh, Ahaya Shaya Mahamashiach, Barakatha, Shalom, Shalom, Yeshua, our righteousness, Lord of all, Lord of glory, Lord of lords, man from heaven, man of sorrows, mediator of the new covenant, the mediator, the messenger of the covenant, the Messiah, the mighty God, the mighty one, the morning star, the Nazarene, the offspring of David, the only begotten son of God, our great God and savior, our holiness, our spiritual husband, our Passover, our protection, our redemption, our righteousness, our sacrificed Passover lamb, the power of God, the precious cornerstone, the prince of kings, the prince of life, the prince of peace, the prophet, the redeemer, the resurrection and life, the revelation, the righteous branch, the righteous one, the rock, the root of David, the rose of Sharon, the ruler of God's creation, the ruler of the kings of the earth, the savior, 
the seed of woman, the seed of woman, the shepherd and bishop of souls, the Shiloh, the son of David, the son of God, the son of man, the son of the blessed, son of the most high God, the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, the son of righteousness, the just one, the one mediator, the stone to build is rejected, the true bread, the true God, the true light, the true vine, the truth, the way, the way, the truth, and life, the wisdom of God, the witness, the wonderful counselor, the word, the word of God, the word of life, the word. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, yes, there you have it, people. So there y'all have it, y'all. All right, that's the church note, man. We serve an awesome creator, and his son is amazing for dying for our sins as well. Hallelujah. So that's that, y'all. Anybody who's battling with a troubled mind of anxiety or worry or overthinking or being anxious or what have you, I pray that you renew your mind in Christ. I pray that the Most High gives you a peace of mind, that you have better sanity, you can focus better, you can get better rest and sleep, you can concentrate better, and you have better thinking patterns, okay? And I pray that the Most High gives you those open doors and change your life forever. Now, that's the church note, y'all. I pray to God that whoever listens to this message, I pray that you get baptized, you repent, and you start your life over for the Most High. I pray that things turn around in a better, dramatic way for you. And I pray that you have more stability and you be more firm and stronger wise. I'm Jarvis Kingston. Y'all stay safe. I got much love for y'all. Peace.